we also will discuss about the staging and grading of the cases uh, diagnosed with coronavirus. So uh, the end of this topic, the students should be able to uh, diagnose or identify a paranotitis case, find out the clinical and radiologic features of paranotitis, and differentiate the different forms of paranotitis and diagnosis of care. Uh, coming on the staging and grading, you should be able to also differentiate the different forms of paranotitis case definition system based on the staging and grading. So our understanding of etiology and pathogenesis of paranotitis disease is continually changing with increasing scientific knowledge. Any attempt to prove the entire constellation of paranotitis disease into an orderly and widely accepted classification is fraught with difficulty and considerable controversy. Nine classification. So in 99 classification, you do have a set of seven uh, parental diseases. But there were certain limitations of 99 classification wherein they couldn't give a proper case definition for parental health. They couldn't give a proper case definition for gingivitis. The definition for the localized and generalized form of disease was not defined. A limitation on the evidence of a term called as aggressive parodontitis that is a disease called aggressive parodontitis they didn't have proper evidence perimplant health and diseases were not dealt with in the previous classification risk factors were not included as a major uh, criteria for diagnosing or classifying the disease so because of all this 99 classification was considered to be a little uh, little not as a failure but it, it was considered a little lower than the present classification so we ca the uh, parodontist came under the classification in the year 2017 so it is very near you can just imagine where 2017 is so last four or five years we all followed this classification wherein parental diseases have been classified as the uh, parental it has been classified as periodontal health gingival diseases and conditions the second one as periodontitis the third one as other conditions affecting the periodontia and the fourth one as perimplant diseases and conditions ne the th second classification periodontitis and other periodontia other conditions affecting the periodontia so you have a set of uh, uh, I mean classification for the two of them I have put put forward in this uh, slide for you go through this so we'll go on first with the basic parental examination so any patient who steps into your clinic and if you want to see for their parental health you need to go for this particular examination called the basic parental examination called as a BPE uh, wherein this is a simple and a rapid screening tool that is used to indicate the level of further examination needed and provides basic guidance on the treatment needed. So here you can see a picture wherein uh, there is a probe present. So this probe is the uh, WHO probe. This probe would be given to you uh, while you come to the clinics to see your patients. So you could see a ball of around 0.5 mm in the bottom. There's a black marking of around 3 point, the shaded marking uh, denotes your black marking, uh, around 3.5 to 5.5. So tomorrow when you go to the clinic, just check out your the probe which is given to you. You will be able to see the ball as well as the uh, markings which are present there. So based on this, we do have uh, certain uh, criteria or scoring codes, uh, how it is being transferred to the papers, how disease is being transferred uh, in terms of letters to the papers. So uh, when the patient comes and when you're going to start your BP index, you're going to divide the entire uh, set or dentition into six categories, six uh, sextants starting from 17 to 14, your tooth number 13 to 23, 24 to 27, 34 to 37, 43 to 33 and 47 to 44. So uh, after analyzing, supposing uh, with the probe, you are analyzing the area tooth number 17 to 14 and if you find that there are no pockets uh, pocket no pockets less than 3.5 mm no calculus or overhangings or no bleeding on probing present then it falls under the category zero if there are less than 3.5 mm pockets no calculus or overhangings but bleeding on probing is present then your uh, scoring code for that sextant is 1 mm uh, is pockets less than 3 mm 3.5 mm supra and sub gingival calculus and overhangs present your scoring criteria is 2 mm so if the pockets the probing depth is 3.5 to 5.5 so you will be able to see this if the black band of the uh, probe is partially visible indicating the pocket of 
4 to 5 mm. Probing depth of more than 5.5 5 mm where the black band disappears indicating a pocket of 6 mm or more. So based on this you do have the uh, BPE calculation like for each extent we have written. So 1714, tooth number 17 to 14 according to the BPE calculation it has 1 which means the scoring code uh, pocket depth is less than 3.5 mm. There is no calculus overhangs bleeding on probing is present. So accordingly you do have the treatment guideline also for the BPE uh, scores. So uh, go through this charting this is very important. So here is the condition of perontitis. So as I explained before, perontitis it is an inflammatory disease of supporting tissues of the teeth caused by specific microorganisms or groups of specific microorganisms resulting in progressive destruction of the parental ligament and the alveolar bone with pocket formation, decision or both. So again, to tell on this definition, you will be learning more about this in classes to come. So you will be familiar what this definition is why have they defined it just in of telling just inflammation of the periodontium why is such big what is being there in the definition so you will eventually come to know about it right so how do you diagnose a periodontitis case so if there is um, uh, a internal clinical attachment loss present between two teeth and if there is a buccal attachment law level is more than 3 mm with pocketing of uh, more than 3 mm is detectable at two side teeth. If this is a the condition, then we tell it to be a perontitis. But the observed clinical attachment level cannot be ascribed to non perontal causes such as your gingival recession of traumatic origin, dental caries. You can see the diagrams below, so I am telling it according to that. Dental caries or the presence of clinical attachment loss on a distal aspect of the second molar and associated malpotion or extraction of the third molar an endodontic lesion draining through the marginal perontium, the occurrence of a perontal root fracture. So what are the symptoms of perontitis condition? So you, the patient might come with you telling about their deposits, stains, dull localized pain, spacing, drifting of the teeth, pus discharge, bad breath, food lodgement, mobile teeth, difficulty in mastication, difficulty in speech. So any of these following condition, examine the mouth if there is attachment loss then means the patient is having a perontitis condition. So here you can see the uh, five, the five to nine. So all this, if it's going to be present in the patient, then you're going to tell that the patient is going to have attachment loss, and because of that, it is perontitis. So color change, loss of contour, stippling, change in consistency, probing pocket depth, mobility, recession, percussion involvement, bone loss, amaline teeth, tendron uh, lateral percussion, and pus discharge. So I've given you another volume by the side wherein if you want a patient to be told as perontitis not only that the interdental clinical uh, attachment loss should be uh, more than 3 mm but also if you have any pockets mobility resistance or percussion then that exactly falls into the category of perontitis coming over the radiologic features usually you will have bone destruction so here you can see that you have the uh, bone pattern which is there present here Supposing if there is uh, bone loss, uh, in the case we, we call it as horizontal bone loss when the uh, bone is reduced in height but the bone margin remains perpendicular to the long axis of the teeth. So here you can see the bone margin perpendicular to the long axis of the teeth. Right? So on the other hand, we call we have the vertical or the angular bone loss wherein there is an oblique or a trough-like effect which is there here. Can you see this? So this is called as the angle. Since there is an angle formed with the long axis of the teeth and this is uh, vertical in fashion, we call this the vertical or an angular defect which leaves a trough out, hollowed out trough-like effect in the bone alongside the root and the base of the defect here is apical to the surrounding bone. So this is comparatively lower compared to the surrounding bone. And as I told you, if it is less than 30% of the teeth involved, we classify them as localized. More than 30%, we classify them as gen uh, general. Next coming on to the grading. So the grading is based on the <coughs> Uh, indirect evidence of progression wherein uh, if there is going to be a heavy biofilm deposits with low levels of destruction you put them under slow rate of progression destruction commensurates with the biofilm deposits uh, grade b but if the destruction exceeds the expectations given by biofilm deposits we put them as grade c so this classification has included the risk factors also into account so grade a includes non-smokers 
grade B smoking less than 10 cigarettes, grade 3 more than 10 cigarettes and grade A again uh, if there is normal glycemic or no diagnosis of diabetes HbA1c less than 7 percentage comes under the grade B category of HbA1c more than 7 percentage comes under the grade C category. So uh, all the others are still in the study phase all the other factors uh, biomarkers and everything is in the study phase. stages for each of the uh, conditions as well as grading we will see how we will uh, stage them and grade them so coming on to the first one you have to have a radiograph along with the uh, 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 patient records to uh, find what the staging or grading is so after that you will have to find out what your uh, how much is your intraday bone loss so this you will calculate at the worst side of the bone loss with due to occurs due to which is a occurred due to peritonitis. So supposing if there is less than 15 percentage of uh, bone loss present, uh, then the person is uh, classified as stage one or early mild uh, uh, peritonitis case. If the bone loss has gone or are gone up to the coronal flood of the root, then he goes into the stage two condition of the disease. If it is in the mid third of the root, we go into the stage three, and if it is Upper side of the root, we go into the stage four of the disease. Uh, same way, to grade it, you have another grading criteria called as percentage of bone loss divided by the patient's age. So in this, if this ratio is less than 0.5, you classify it as grade A, wherein there is just a slow rate of progression of the disease. Supposing it is 0.5 to 1, then you term it as grade B, where there is a moderate rate of progression of the disease. If it's more than one, we term it as grade C. Coming on to the assessment of the current peritonitis status. So once a patient has reported to you, you first after staging and grading, you have to see at what uh, what is his peritonitis status, whether it is currently stabilized now. So this is based on the factor whether his number of bleeding uh, sites is less than ten percentage, the pocket probing depth is less than of equal to four mm present, and no bleeding or probing more than uh, four sites present. So if all of this is present, then he is said to be in the currently stable state. So he is not having any problem as such. Just he has to come for a review. Currently in a remission state in the sense, so if he is having bleeding or probing in the sites of more than 10% of the sites present, and pocket probing depth is still less than 4 mm. So he is currently in a remission phase, so we have to be a little careful in this patient. So the third, third one, uh, or the most important one, is the currently unstable patient, wherein you have the pocket probing depth of more than 5 mm and also bleeding on probing on almost all the sides. So it is given as red sign. And after this, you will see if there is any risk factors present, for example, smoking, including cigarettes or uh, how many cigarettes per day and the control diabetes factor. So when you are going to give a diagnosis statement, so you will, you will have to have it in this order. The extent, what the disease is, the stage, the grade, the stabilizing the stability which is uh, present whether it's stable or unstable and the risk factors so the extent could be that whether he is generalized or localized periodontitis so generalized periodontitis is in the stage 3 category grade b stage 3 grade b and he is currently unstable and the risk factors he smokes 15 days cigarettes per day so this is called as a diagnosis statement To reiterate again, so you are going to determine the type of periodontal disease, periodontitis or other periodontal conditions, then you will see the disease extent, whether it's generalized, localized or the intersamolar pattern, then you will stage it and then you will grade it. So this four is very important for a patient uh, who is periodontitis and during exams you do have MEQs which are given which means it's modified essay question. So you have more of this type of questions wherein you will have to find what the diagnosis of the patient is wherein you will have to write all these uh, the type of the disease, the disease extent, staging as well as grading.
so to conclude uh, as classification systems have evolved newer thoughts about periodontal disease have been superimposed on a matrix of older ideas that are still considered to be valid one of the interesting historical features of classification systems is often the intense resistance to their modification however classification systems should be viewed as a dynamic work in progress that needs to be periodically modified based on current thinking and knowledge thank you for further doubts please do contact with the department of periodontology